Good morning, good morning, good morning. Here we are. Another opportunity we have to get into God's Word and get our dose of God's Word to get our day kicked off right. This morning I want to look at something that uh, the psalmist wrote way back yonder in that Old Testament. In Psalm 81, um, within this larger context, he's talking, he's kind of recounting um, Israel's history and their unfaithfulness uh, to him. And he makes a statement within all of this that I think is very relevant, important for us uh, really kind of take heed and understand. The psalmist says, Psalm 81, Psalm 81, and in verse 11, it says, But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of it. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Now, we're just going to take a few moments this morning, but if one understands much of the message of the Old Testament, especially um, throughout the prophets, um, and really kind of beginning in the book of Judges, is a lot of, you know, there was a lot of messianic prophecies that were made throughout that, but the, the, one of the big points in all of that, uh, Judges, um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Haggai, you know, uh, Ezekiel, you know, all these, all these Joel, and all these, you know, all these prophets, is there was a single purpose why them prophets were sent to them, is that the people had their own version of serving God. They were mixing up, they were still going to the temple, they were still doing all that kind of stuff, but they had perverted and come up with their own ways of how they wanted to do things. Hence, God says they wouldn't heed my voice. They wouldn't listen to me. You know, sometimes I'm asking, you know, why are there so many churches? Very, it's the same old problem. People aren't listening to the voice of God, which is in his word. He's not going to stand on your shoulder and whisper in your ear. He's already told us. He's already revealed it. We have his mind, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 there. So we know what it is that God wants, just like Israel did. They knew what he had. They, they had the law. The old Moses was up on that mountain for 40 days. He got more than 10 commandments. He got, out, he got it all. So they knew, they had in written form, what it was, how to serve and please God. But they weren't listening to what the word had said. And they wouldn't have any of it. You know, so many times, a lot of times, people that say that they're spiritual and religious and they're in this church, and that, you know, it really doesn't matter what God says. Now, people wouldn't say that, but really the reaction and what's actually done, that's really where it is. They, 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 they're not going to have anything of what God says because they have this own idea of what God wants. So they're not going to have anything to, to do with what God actually says. He says, so I gave them over their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. So he said, okay, f fine. I'm not going to grab you by the nap of the neck. I'm not going to come back and I'm not going to sit you down. And I'm not going to drill, drill my word into you. If you want to go this way, then okay, go ahead. They wouldn't have none of the truth. They already had their minds made up. They're going to do what they're going to do. He said, all right, but it's fine. Go ahead and walk in your own counsels. And we can see throughout the Old Testament the repercussions and the consequences of doing that. Israel, the northern ten tribes, went off in Assyrian captivity, never come out of that. They were scattered everywhere. The two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, they went off into Babylonian captivity. They come back, not because they deserved it, but because the Messiah still had to come. You read the book of Ezekiel, you'll see that over and over and over, not because of their goodwill, not that they deserve it, but because of his namesake. He had, he'd made a promise to Abraham that the Messiah was going to come through his uh, lineage. And so um, that's why they were sent, that's why God did it. They wouldn't listen to the written word, and they were just going to do things their way. Boy, you just read through the book of Ezekiel you'll see that uh, so paramount and so clear. They're going to the temple, they're doing this, they're doing that, but they're doing things according to their own will. He says, verse 3, oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that my people would listen. But that tells us that, <laughs> that God 
is not okay with us doing what we think is okay. God wants us to do what he said. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Well, they didn't listen. Much like today, isn't it? Again, why do we have so many churches? Is it because we can't understand the truth? I don't believe that's the case because Paul said in Ephesians 3 and verse 4, he said, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of truth. You, we can understand what the truth is. It's not complicated. But why are there so many churches? Well, this right here. They're going by their own counsels. Going by their own wants to's. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my way, not our ways, not in our heart, but in God's ways, not in our heart's ways, but in God's ways. You see a difference here? He goes on, and notice this. He says, verse 15, The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their fate would endure forever. Here's what, here's what he's saying. These are people that claim to be religious, believers, Christians. But they're not doing it according to God's way. They're doing it on their, on their terms. They are pretending submission. That's what he's talking about. It's very, the more you study the Old Testament, the more this point becomes so crystal clear. They didn't completely turn their back on God. Like I said, they were still sacrificing. They were still going to the temple. They were still doing a lot of these things. But they were doing it based on how they wanted to do this. They were mingling other gods up into um, the things concerning uh, Jehovah. And so they were pretending submission. They, in their minds, would have thought they were submitting to God. But God says, because they're not listening, they're not going by my word, they're going by the counsel of their own hearts. The end result is they're pretending submission to me. And he says, but their fate would endure forever. That means we are going to be held accountable. We will be punished. We will be condemned if our religion, if our doctrine, all right, is contrary to what God actually says. There is a high and eternal price uh, to pay for that. You know, Paul said things written aforetime time were written for our learning. There's something we can learn from this. There's something we need uh, to learn uh, from texts like this is that we can pretend submission. We can be hallelujahs and praise God's and all this other kind of stuff and clapping and carrying on. And carry. We can pretend submission, but if we're not doing things exactly the way God said, there's a high eternal price to pay for that. That's why we need to be very humble and come back to the Bible and do what they didn't do. Listen to the voice of God that we have written down for us. Hey, there's your dose of God's word today. Let us not be like these people. Let us not, be, let us not pretend submission to God. Let us truly and wholly be submissive to God. Psalm 81 and in verse 11 on down through 13 and thereabouts. So think about these things and get in your Bible, study it, meditate upon these things and pray that God give you some understanding and clarity of mind and an honest heart to see through our own conclusions. Hey, hope you all have a great day. Lord willing, we'll get back tomorrow and get us another dose of God's word. We'll see you then.